Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you how to clean up and beautify after a solder repair. We're going to show you how to uh, do preventative uh, work so it, you don't get things burned too much. We're also going to show you how to clean up and then do some lacquer matching as well. So lots of good stuff for uh, repair techs and amateur repair techs alike. We do have a hashtag for you, that is heat control. Take that, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up. Uh, and we do have a few of them coming up in this year. In the couple of weeks, we have our advanced saxophone course on September 18th through 21st, and we will go over some soldering and advanced soldering topics in that course. We also have our October 18th, I'm uh, sorry, October 16th through 18th hand engraving course, and that's going to give you uh, a complete hands-on uh, with how to do uh, professional style uh, instrument engraving. We're also going to provide you with all the tools, so check the website for that. We also have some other courses coming up in 2024, and you can win uh, uh, discounts on tuition if you take heat control. Put that in the comments below. We also have a winner from last week when we did our Bushford video, and the winner is Nevin Alasta3273. Uh, Nevin, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount code, and I want to congratulate the last winner whose name I can't remember from last week, okay. who, who won our... Palm Key Riser? Palm, Palm Key Riser. Nice. So we will ship out prizes and we will give discount codes. So make sure you take those comments, put them below to be entered into our giveaways. And then make sure you like, share, subscribe, and click the bell. Click the bell. You'll get alerted. That's right. We're, we're starting a little early today. So uh, if you click that bell, you'll, you'll know when we start. All right, Ryan. So let's get into solder jobs. Let's talk a little bit solder about... Solder cleanup. Yes. Uh, what are some of the things when somebody's soldering either at home or at the bench that they can do to prevent lacquer from burning? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's that saying? An ounce of prevention is a pound of a cure. A pound of a pound, cure. Yes. A kilo of prevention and yeah. you're in for a good time. I don't know. Whatever. So, uh, yes, doing some preventative things. So if you're going to be soldering a post, hopefully you don't get something. We're trying to avoid this. You can see that's... A little crispy. It's a little crispy. A little burnt. You can see that. A little burnt. That clear stuff in there is where the, the burnt lacquer has actually been removed, where it's just burnt off completely. And we want to try to avoid this. So the very first thing is heat control. Okay, heat control. There it is. Heat control. So when you're soldering to make sure you don't use too much heat, because that's what does that. Okay. okay. It could also be the flux as well. So make sure you're not over applying your flux, which is your acid to kind of prep the surface and allow that solder to flow in there. If you use a little too much, it drips everywhere. You're heating it up too much. That flux can also burn away at the lacquer. Mm. Um, so making sure you're using, you know, the appropriate size torch. You don't want to heat it up too much, moving it around. Um, we'll talk about this during the advanced sax saxophone course, proper heat control. So we're not burning lacquer, but sometimes we do all this stuff and the lacquer, for whatever reason, it's just old. It's just going to burn. Okay, some of that nitrocellulose lacquer uh, can burn. Even some of the newer stuff, if you look at it too long, it could burn. Uh, so we got to figure out a way to actually clean this area up. Uh-oh, we've, we've burnt our lacquer. Now we've got to clean this area up here. So what do we do? Actually, we get, are we going to talk about the S? The that is, oh, that is true. If you are watching this and you know what the name of that the S is. Right here. Everybody did it in school. Yes. Everybody called it something different. I'm not going to say what I called it because I don't want to sway the boats. <laughs> but if you write in and tell us, there's no right or wrong answer, what you called this type of S. Okay. That will also get you an entry, I think. Okay, I think it, it, it might, if you put the, the hashtag and what you call this, two entries. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Two entries, double your chances. Yes. Yeah, I, okay. I think somebody can win. Somebody already wrote something in. Okay. Nice. Okay. Very nice. nice. All right. Thank you. So either the S or the hashtag, but let's get into some of the tools and some of the um, products that we're going to use to kind of clean up the area. The very first, you can kind of see them in the back here, how I have organized, are my bristle discs. Now that we sell these here at Music Medic, we sell them individually, and you can see what I've done is I, when I put that on a mandrel, I've stacked it. So I have a little bit more surface area. I really like using these bristle discs for cleaning these areas, these larger areas in here, especially when I've stacked these. Uh, and what I've done is I've arranged them from most aggressive, so the roughest grit, down to the least aggressive. Some, some of them are my polishing ones. That guy, get that out of here, mm -hmm. okay? But it's all in here. So depending on 
the situation, how burnt this is, the condition of the brass underneath, depends on what grit I'm going to be using. Um, I also have things like sanding sticks. If it's really, really bad and you, and you need to clean up that brass surface and prep it, you can use those. We have a scraper. This is the world's best scraper. Um, good for cleaning up any solder blobs that may have oozed out from underneath that post. You can use this to clean them up. Um, other things that you can use to clean up maybe solder blobs are these guys right here. These are silicone polishing wheels, and you can see how those are applied onto a mandrel. And they have kind of a nice edge to them, which makes it perfect for getting up next to that, that little area where the, the kind of the flange of this, this contact contacts the body. Okay. Sometimes you get maybe a little bit of extra solder that comes out there. And if you want to clean them up, this is what I will use. I don't use these on big open surface areas just to where maybe two parts meet. Okay. Um, the other things you can use are mini buffs. You can use regular size buffs, but I like, like using mini buffs in conjunction with this guy right here, which is our Fordham. This is the handpiece. Yeah, let's talk about this guy right here. So a lot of these rotary tools you can use with a Dremel. Very common. You can even put them in your bench motor. But here in the pro shop, we like to use this, which is a Fordham, forward and reverse. Mm -hmm. Typically, we'll just use it in forward. And then it also does have a speed control. So I'll turn this guy on. This guy will rotate, and this allows me to get in there and clean everything up. As you can see, it's a little bit easier than taking it to a big, giant buffing wheel. So when I'm using my mini buffs, I like to use those in the Fordham. And this is where I will keep a lot of the buffing compounds. So we have a couple different types of traditional buffing. We have our Tripoli, which is this stuff right here. Good for cut buffs, uh, prepping the surface, especially yes. if the texture of the brass is kind of pitted. Mm -hmm. um, for something like this, which this, the underlying texture of the brass is still pretty good, all right? but it's just that it's burnt. I would probably go straight to the color buff compound. And for that, I'm using Blue Hubble. It's my absolute favorite. Mm. I want to give it to all my relatives for Christmas, put it in their stockings. They'll be like, what is this? It's like, oh, you don't like it? Just re-gift it to me. <laughs> um, but I like to use it with these mini buffs, again, in that Fordham. You use this in conjunction with the Blue Hubble. And it does a really good job of cleaning up. Like, this is probably enough to remove a lot of this burnt lacquer. Right. So I get in there, clean that up, bring it up to whatever shine. So there's two things I'm thinking about. Actually, let me go a couple over, over a couple more things before I talk about the two things. Okay. Um, some compound or some some solvents that we have in these little pump bottles. I have both denatured alcohol and acetone. Uh, they're handy when you're degreasing after doing your buffing. Okay, just to, on a rag, and you can do that. Doesn't actually make that sound, but it's really good uh, for dispensing whatever chemicals you may have. Uh, I have my Q-tips in my handy dandy holder uh right there so uh let's see what else masking tape is also good if you're you know maybe don't want to buff an area or don't want an area lacquered you can mash that off with some traditional masking tape so two things we're thinking about two things there we are two oh, sorry two things that i want to think about when i'm matching the color of uh or i'm matching lacquer i'm cleaning up a post area which is color or sorry texture and color okay for texture, again, since this is kind of nice and smooth and it's not really pitted or worn, uh, I would probably just go with a color buff to kind of clean up that area and, and try to match it as far as a bright and shiny um, okay. surface. If I'm working maybe with an older instrument that's a lot of it is bare brass that's left over, I don't know if I would buff just this one area up. If this is all like a matte brass finish and I have just a little area that's bright and shiny, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. So what I would do in this case is I would try to match the texture. So I might not go as, as uh, delicate with my buffing compound. I may just do a quick little cut buff, clean up the area from any burnt lacquer or any discoloration from your actual soldering, mm -hmm. uh, and then leave it at that. Okay, the texture is fine. So matching texture, and then next would be matching the actual color. Okay. So uh, a lot of these horns are either the, the lacquer is tinted or the underlying brass has start to darken up over time. And a lot of times it has more of a gold color. Um, so we want to kind of, after matching our uh, texture, we want to kind of match our coloration. So a lot of times we have, as far as protectant, just spray uh, lacquer. Okay. Right? So just clear lacquer, spray it on top, be done with it, protect the surface. Hopefully it won't, it won't um, tarnish and corrode as much. We have other options as well. 
this is a handy thing to have. You can see the sprayer where we can mix in whatever pre-mixed color tinted lacquer uh, and have this be able to spray out. So if I'm covering this area with lacquer, I can just spray that right there like that. Um, or another tip I've heard years and years ago is to take clear fingernail polish. This was clear at one point in time. And what I did is I added some lacquer dye to it. This is stuff made by Fariz. Uh, depending on the color of the lacquer that you're working with, you may need two drops or three drops or mm -hmm. six drops. Um, so what you can do is have a couple different bottles of clear fingernail polish. Maybe in this one, I'll put two drops and the next one I'll put four and the next one I'll put six to kind of color or, uh, you know, vary that color of lacquer. And then what you can do is because it's just brush on, you can brush on exactly what you need in the area that you need. Okay. Um, you can still do that with the spray lacquer. But what I do is I will take a thing of spray lacquer and usually I will spray it into a Dixie cup. And then when it kind of liquefies, I will take a Q-tip cotton swab. And now I can apply lacquer exactly where I need. Mm. Now, Ryan, what about other uh, methods of tinting? So we talked about cleanup uh, with all the different tools. Uh, it looks like there's a couple other abrasives that you might use. Is there sanding sticks? Yep, we got some sanding sticks okay. we could use to, yeah, again, either clean up the burnt areas of lacquer, clean up any discoloration. You can also match texture with it. Okay. Uh, our, our 3M polish paper is oh, also yeah. really, really good for that, for matching texture. It's a very fine uh, kind of abrasive. Um, but yes, so using tinted lacquer can be kind of a hit or miss mm. uh, where if you maybe mix it too light or too dark as soon as you spray it on there's no going back okay uh, that's kind of it if it's too light or too dark you're either stuck with it or you got to start over there is a chemical that we have used here in the pro shop which is this right here the name is Jax, and this is their gold finish this is a chemical that you apply to bare brass so I would do everything over here. I would clean this up, try to match my texture. And then for matching coloration, I would use this. You put a little bit on and what it does it starts a chemical reaction to actually start to darken the brass and it starts to turn it kind of a, um, a kind of a deep gold coloration. It doesn't match a lot of the newer gold lacquers, but some of the older vintage gold lacquers, um, it does a pretty good job of kind of matching up. So what you can do is you can apply that to where it start slowly darkens, darkens, darkens. And when it matches the surrounding, you get it dark enough, you can wipe it down with water that stops that chemical reaction. And then you can spray it with just regular clear lacquer. Okay. So it's much easier and I've, I've had much better success uh, matching lacquer or, you know, in, in areas that way using this stuff than matching with spray tinted lacquer. Okay, so in my experience. So in your experience, it's easier to tint the metal itself. Yes. Gives you a little more control than trying to cover the metal with a tinted lacquer. Yeah. Some guys are great at it and they can match it very well. Uh, okay. My problem is I'm actually colorblind. So it, it's difficult for me to actually match lacquer, which is why I don't know I was tasked with the job of matching lacquer in the pro shop for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So I, I always had to go to somebody else say, hey, what do you think about this? And they'd be like, nope, needs to be darker. I was like, okay, a little bit more. Like, what about now? It's like, okay, it's fine. Stop bothering me. So. <laughs> oh, excellent, Ryan. So what about, let me also, uh, so we've talked about preventative maintenance. We've also talked about some of the tools and supplies. I'll put links to them in the description below. Uh, we've talked about cleaning up solder on different instruments, as well as doing some uh, finishing. What about a silver instrument? Silver instrument, yes. Can you do the same stuff on silver? You can. The nice thing about silver is it's not lacquered. Okay, it's a silver plated instrument. It's not going to have lacquer on it most of the time. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But with silver, you do have to take more care when you're soldering. Okay, mm. so there are a couple things like maybe if I'm soldering this post oh, sorry, on, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. that's all right. If I'm soldering this post on or, or, or this contact on, I want to make sure my area is prepped a little bit better. Okay, mm -hmm. um, when you're soldering on silver plated instruments, if you get that soft solder dripping on the silver, it's very, very difficult to remove. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have to actually remove the silver plate or you end up removing that silver plating underneath, trying to wipe away that solder. Mm -hmm. With brass, you can wipe it and then you can buff it and underneath it's gonna be brass. But if you buff that away on a silver plated instrument, it's gonna be a, a brass spot underneath showing through. So a couple things you can use is this stuff right here. We can find it anywhere, which is just white out. And what you would do is you would use it as a mask. So you would cover this surrounding area, 
All right. So when you apply your solder, if any little bit drips out, it won't stick to that surrounding hmm. area right there. So white out is also good. Uh, we also sell this stuff, Tix Anti-Flux, which same thing. It just prevents the solder from running to that area. Let's say you happen to, to get a little bit sticking out on your silver plated instrument. You can use something like this. This is a, a charcoal pencil. Okay. And, right? and, and Ryan, I just had a question about the yes. charcoal pencil. How do you use the charcoal pencil? Well, you either hold it with your right hand or your left hand. Okay. Sometimes both if you really want to get in there. But no, you would use this if I'm trying to maybe clean up. Let's pretend for sake of imagination purposes that this is a silver plated instrument and I soldered this on and I have maybe just a little bit of silver or, or solder sticking out. I can use this charcoal pencil to kind of get in there and it's abrasive enough to remove the soft solder but it doesn't really do a lot of damage to the silver plate. Okay. Okay. If you were to use a sanding stick, oh, you're removing both mm. for sure. The uh, charcoal pencil, it's a little bit more delicate. Okay. And then what about, is, say you remove too much material, is brush plating yes. an option for silver? Yep. Um, silver plate is fairly uh, durable when it comes to soldering. So a lot of times you can solder it back on, just kind of clean things up, maybe even use a paste uh, silver polish. Uh, and that usually kind of brings back that luster of the silver. Sometimes it does get removed or it burns off maybe too much heat. Maybe you're not using enough heat control. You're not using heat control. And maybe you, you do something to that lacquer. Maybe it's an older horn. Brush plating is an option. Um, okay. There are little uh, kits that you can get. You hook electrode on and then you actually dip it in a solution. Uh, and then that actually will apply a, a thin coating of silver plate. You have to be careful though because it can be somewhat of a thin coating. Now do technicians ever lacquer over the brush plated silver? You can. Uh, I, I have talked to guys that have done really good lacquer work and they say typically silver plated instruments don't really, the lacquer doesn't really want to stick very well. Mm. Solid silver instruments, it's a little different story, but for whatever reason, lacquering on silver plated instruments, it's, it's not the best. But you could do it, especially if it's a high traffic area like a key touch something that's going to get worn a little bit, it will buy you a little bit of time, but realize that lacquers might start peeling off. Okay, so. very good. Well, Ryan, thank you for that excellent okay. demonstration. I don't think I have any other questions for you. Uh, Taryn did write in she, uh, and said that the, the S is the Stussy S. Stussy S, is, not uh, to correct you. Uh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Well, maybe he does say Stussy. I don't know. Who am I? Uh, we just did a thing on Busher and Bisher. That's true. So. You're very particular with the pronunciations. That's right. Uh, so the Stussy S. And so, so Taryn, you win. You win. You're, <laughs> you're, you're win. already a winner. You're already a winner. So make sure that you uh, contact me at richrich at musicmedic.com to get your discount code. And for the rest of you, make sure that you check out the website for our saxophone smackdown on february 23rd to 24th as well as the take the heat control hashtag put that in the comments below that'll give you a chance to win 50 percent off any of the courses that we have coming up that we talked about earlier next week we will be back at with the beginning of september september sorry we're supposed to say at the same time <laughs> september september and we are going to be showing you uh some intricacies of selmer saxophones we're going to go over a couple of different uh manufacturers for sax temper so tune in next week we'll be back with a couple of cool summer saxophones to show you some things about uh, like share subscribe all that good stuff until next time happy repairing